Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express here on SABC3, still broadcasting across the land. Now, we were talking a bit earlier on with Suzanne Ackerman Berman from Pick and Pay about what Pick and Pay is doing out there to make a difference. And indeed, the amazing thing about South Africans is that when the call for help is given out there, we are able to put up our hands and really put our best foot forward in order to help our fellow man out there. And two guys who did exactly that, they put themselves in the shoes of the man to walk the walk are Mark Vera and uh, Shane McConaughey through the Walk the Walk initiative, which I think is amazing what you guys did. But Shane, give us a bit of a breakdown of what the Walk the Walk initiative was all about. Well, it actually kind of started on Mark's birthday this year, mm -hmm. uh, where he wanted to do something something different instead of having a, a debaucherous one and spending loads of cash. Uh, he got 10 or 12 of us together, and we cooked for the Haven Night Shelter. Um, and after that, the, the group of us that were together, we just wanted to do it again, and we kept aiming bigger and better. Yeah. Um, and Mark we came up with the idea for Walk the Walk just to put ourselves in that situation and not assume. Yeah. We can't find solutions or try and help people if we don't know what the real story is. So what you guys actually literally did is for a week long, yeah, you guys actually lived as homeless people in the streets of Cape Town. Correct, yeah. We left, left on Monday morning with the clothes on our back and no money, nothing in our pockets, and off we went and yeah. out into the big bad world. If so to speak. Mark, people would, would tend to think that, yeah, yeah, okay, they did it because, I mean, there were, there were people documenting the entire experience there, so in front of cameras, you guys were living that way, but, you know, when the cameras went off, there was a trailer waiting for you. Did you guys really put yourselves through, through that experience, and if so, what, what did you experience? Um, I think the misconception of people think we actually had a crew around us. We filmed majority, if not 90% of the, of the week on our iPhone. Yeah. And we had a crew that interviewed us daily at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. for our actual diary entries, they then swapped our batteries. I think it's important to know we also did the entire week without a security team, so wow. um, to experience it firsthand what living on the streets of Cape Town is actually like. So a cell phone was crucial if we had any emergencies. Um, as far as scenarios go, I think um, the lowest of the lows, as you can probably not expect, I think that even the day before on the Sunday we were going to wash cars and park cars and, and uh, beg at robots, but yeah, begging at robots is doing, uh, doing, the, doing the actual begging with a sign is probably the most demoralizing thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. So you then start understanding, given the, the responses of members of the public, when the, their fingers, their middle fingers go up, their windows are wound up, there's big words thrown at you, uh, there's that, I'll wait for him to walk close to the car and then pull forward, and yeah. just getting that on a continuous basis starts getting quite uh, demoralizing. Yeah, I can imagine. Shane, tell me about the, your experiences, I mean, the emotions you went through, uh, talking about some of the stuff that happened uh, while you were on the street. I think Mark and I were lucky in a lot of ways, because we, we had the whole seven days, um, and a lot of the emotions, we, we obviously we tried to capture, um, but there, there were major highs and major lows, I and mean, the, the, high, the highest points were honestly having, having friends around. That to kind of support you through it. The low, the low points of being hungry, being tired, demoralized, uh, and in a lot of ways, at some points, very angry. You just don't know what to do, and just the, the bewilderedness and just uh, loss of what to do. Um, you really don't know. There were times that we walked around for hours, we just had no idea where to go next or what to do next, um, and can only begin to imagine what it must be like for people actually living on the street for years at a time. And that, there's a picture of us uh, the one night and it was freezing. It really was horribly cold. You can't get warm, you can't get any kind of warmth. There's just, the night seems so long, like a six hour period between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. just takes forever. Wow. So, Mark, what do, you, what do you guys hope that South Africans will gain from this and will take from this? And how do we go about starting in a, in a small way that we can to make a difference and to help where we can? I think it's a good question. I mean, initially we didn't uh, plan to come up with solutions for Cape Town or South Africa in terms of what we can do to get the homeless off the streets per se. We're not going to be able to solve issues that have been around for decades. Um, what we have learned though, and what we did learn on day five of this Walk the Walk campaign was that handing out monetary donations to people at the robots is the worst thing you can possibly do. Really? 100%. Because by doing so, and irrespective of our temporary feel-good factor we have about ourselves by helping someone that's less fortunate, we're actually enabling these individuals to continue living on the streets with a life of zero responsibility. We're pretty much saying to them, here's money, come back tomorrow, I'll give you more, I'll feel good about myself, but we'll all continue giving you money. Don't worry about getting a job, don't worry about any upliftment, we'll just assist whatever, with whatever your habits are. So I think that initially is a, a step forward in, in what not to do. And what to do is maybe what we plan on doing is working together with the government assessment centers in the city of Cape Town and CCID, which is the Infrastructure Development, yeah. 
And with various shelters, like the Haven Night Shelter, has got 15 branches around Cape Town. And instead of us giving out monetary funds, we should work together with the city in giving out either coupons or something that we can then hand out to these, these folks in the street where they can re go redeem. And it's equivalent to 10 Rand. And for that, they get uh, a shower, they get a warm meal, they get a change of clothing, and they get a place to sleep. Yeah. So if we can somehow change the mindsets of the public and in turn change the mindsets of those who are, are less fortunate on the streets, I think that's a small step to what the winning formula may be. Brilliant stuff. Well, guys, thank you very much for, for taking on this mammoth task and really bringing awareness to this thank you very, very much. challenging cause indeed. Yeah. Well, I think I, I, I can share the story with you. I met a gentleman the other day um, at the airport when I landed, and I asked him essentially what it is that he needed in his life to improve it. I gave him a football analogy, and he said that if he was a footballer in a team, in order to improve his life, he needs someone to take time to be his coach, to mentor him, and to help him figure out what this life is all about. So ponder that a little bit right now. But Ewan, over to you.